What's my background in art? Well, I've been drawing ever since uh, I can remember. Uh, mostly when I was younger, it was all about comic books, you know. Mike Grell uh, stories and artwork were important to me. I remember uh, going to the comic book store and buying a Conan the Barbarian comic because I wanted to learn how to draw the muscles, where the positions of all the muscles were. So it was mostly about comic books when I was younger and then when I got into junior high, I remember um, I was on the, uh, uh, in the journalism class with the school newspaper and I did a, a comic for every issue. Uh, it had something to do with King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. Then uh, I also did a comic book called Earth Heroes. It's like 1979 and uh, made copies of that and tried to sell them to the kids um, at school. Then uh, when I got into high school, I uh, met a friend, a fellow artist, Dana Cohn, and him and I were really into M.C. Escher, Frank Frazetta, um, Alan Lee was really important to us. Um, uh, all of these kind of fantasy, fairy tale things, otherworldly um, art. Uh, once I got out of high school, um, I did uh, art professionally. Then I met uh, Drew Struzan, uh, made a big impact on my art and uh, I think what my direction was as far as the art uh, work would go. I eventually got a job with a commercial art firm uh, down in Los Angeles and did commercial posters and other different uh, illustration commercially. I did portraits for people. I um, sold quite a bit of wildlife uh, for a while. Um, Robert Bateman was really important to me at the time. During those years, uh, wildlife seemed to be working well for me. I was selling every painting and drawing that I had done in wildlife. Uh, newspaper interviewed me, a national art magazine uh, had a full page on El Hunt. There were a couple local television stations that did an interview with me. So things were seemed to be taking off at that time. But wildlife really, it was a nice era. But wildlife isn't El Hunt. It's a lot more than that. So I, I learned a lot in those years and um, I enjoyed it. It was exciting. But now it's, it's, it's grown and I, I think it's matured. I think it's matured as far as um, how I'm putting it into practice. Uh, not, uh, you know, it was so important to be uh, realistic, almost like a, like a photograph. I went through an Andrew Wyeth phase, uh, Ralph Steedman, uh, great artist there, love that style of work. But that's not, uh, that's not really what I want for L. Hunt as far as the artwork goes. Ansel Adams uh, photography and uh, those contrasts of blacks and whites were really important to me for a while putting those uh, into my paintings, making sure there were areas that were pure white, areas that were pure black. Yeah, yeah, there was a lot of, a lot of great illustrations in that. Um, in Desert Rose, uh, I wanted, this was the Ansel Adams era for me, and the blacks and the whites. So the pictures are black ink drawings on white or scratchboard, which is a, starts off black and you scratch away and reveal the white below. That was a nice uh, little task of putting that entire book together. I was very proud of it when it was done. <laughs> yeah, body parts uh, were pretty important for a while. Um, Self-portraits, uh, just analyzing uh, different parts of my face and um, uh, doing hands, people's hands and different gestures, trying to get the, uh, see what kind of emotion, kind of impact just hands would, uh, would bring to an audience. Uh, this idea of 
uh, a show of hands would be the name of the, the show, and every picture would only be hands, and it, they would have gestures and tell stories. And the best thing that came out of that whole um, era was uh, the picture that I did called No More about child abuse, where the, the child is fending off an attacker that's going to hit him. Um, that is kind of like, uh, you know, the pinnacle of my realist phase. Um, eventually I got into Geordie LaBanda and it kind of brings us right up, uh, up to where we're at today. And action! Cut.